your own deck with Ursula Camille. And this is The Triage Room. The Triage Room is a podcast that encourages and empowers listeners to overcome obstacles of pain. Pain is the physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. When we describe the type of pain we're having, we're really describing the symptoms. Once we identify the symptoms, then we can deal with the roots. Welcome to The Triage Room. You're now on deck with Ursula Camille, and this is the triage room. Today's topic, don't speak the language of unbelief. In the book of Numbers, chapter 13 and 14, Moses sent spies out in chapter 13 to go and spy on the land of Canaan. And as the spies went out, they made several observations. They come back and they give a full report, sharing that, you know, yes, the land is full of milk and honey, just as the Lord has said. And they also went into this whole spiel about the giants and how they're stronger than them and how in their sight they're seen as grasshoppers. And Caleb's like, let's, let's go possess it because we can overcome it. Caleb has faith. And so here you have a group of people. Now when they speak, they're like giving this evil report and they're sharing with the people, with the, the children of Israel, what they saw. And now all it's doing is feeding whatever fear was already there in the children of Israel, feeding the doubt that was already there in the children of Israel. And now they're having this this thought and wanting to go back to Egypt. So in Numbers 13 and 14, the spies go, they come back and give this report, and they're beginning to speak this language of unbelief, language of doubt. Well, what does that sound like? They're stronger than us, pointing at all these things. They're this, they're that. No, 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 we can't, we can't go. This is not going to work instead of focusing on what God had already spoken. And it's like coming back and saying, yeah, the land is just what God said. Why can't you just trust what God said from the beginning? Coming back and showing and sharing. And now you got the children of Israel because of the report and who is coming from. Instead of leaning on what God has already said, now they're taking what These spies have come back to report the ones that are given an evil report. They're taking it. And it's almost like all is uh, just, everything is over. There's nothing to even hold on to. Now they want to revert back to what's familiar and speaking things. We can't, they're so much bigger than us. They're giants. There's no way not even wanting to try. And so they're speaking this doubt. They're speaking this fear and this doubt that they're speaking is birthing fear Instead of holding on to what God has said. So when it comes to don't speak the language of unbelief, whatever is before you, don't entertain it and look at it from your natural sight. Yes, you may be looking at a giant, a giant situation, a giant mountain, a giant obstacle. But if you only look at it with your natural sight, you will not allow faith to put you in position to believe God's word, to speak God's word, and to know that no matter what it looks like in the natural does not mean that that is the way that it is. Faith is required. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you got to believe beyond what is in front of you. So when the spies went and they saw these giants, yeah, they were already prepared for the land of milk and honey. They were prepared for that. But it's the giants they weren't prepared for going to a place. Maybe they just weren't prepared anyway. They went to a land to spy and see and come back and give a report. But all it did was reveal that inwardly they lacked faith inwardly. They still needed faith to grow more. They needed faith to mature more. They needed to be more in a place to be able to handle what it was that they saw. And Caleb rose up to the occasion. Now, let's let's go ahead and go. Yeah, we, we can do this. We got this. That's what faith does when you know that God has your back. When you know that God has already spoken. When you know that God has already given you the word. You know what God has already spoken over your life. Why look at the giant thing that is before you and allow it to birth fear. Allow it to cause you to speak doubt, to speak a language that does not sound like faith. That sounds like you just do not believe what God has already spoken. And here's my moment of transparency. I know what it's like to be in a place where going off of natural sight because I had allowed what I was looking at with my natural sight to lead instead of holding on to what God had already told me. 
too busy focused on what the situation looked like in the natural. And I had to repent and come out of that place and be like, okay, wait a minute, Lord, this is what you told me. I know what I'm looking at. I know what I'm facing. I know everything that's, that's right here before me, but just because this is what's presenting itself right now, God, you said this. I don't have to accept what I'm seeing. You said this. And I had to keep repeating over and over again what God had already spoken to me. Some things written in a journal that I had to go back and refer to. Yeah, it was written a while ago, but I had to go back and refer to it for the moment that I was in and at that time. So that I could get myself in a place to not go off of what my natural eye was seeing. This thing of wanting to know, wanting to see prior to going. Sometimes we have to be prepared more. We have to allow God to do more of a work in us to prepare us for where he's taking us. Because like the spies, if we're not mature, if we're not ready when it comes to faith. And we're seeing giant situations and giant things. And we've gone prematurely to take a look and see at something. And it has not been time yet because God is still doing a work in us. We can be like some of these spies and then get into a place of having doubts, speaking unbelief, speaking what you can't do, speaking what can't be done. And then looking and seeing yourself small, calling yourself a grasshopper and saying, well, this is how they see me. Words have power, death and life and the power of the tongue and they that love it should eat the fruit thereof. How are you seeing yourself? What lens are you looking through? So when it comes to don't speak the language of unbelief, don't speak those negative things that sound like you're doubting, that sound like you're not believing what God said about you, that sound like you're not believing God's word that is written. You're coming to your own conclusion and you're speaking negative things over your life and words have power. Don't let the things that you're seeing cause you to speak a thing that is birthing fear. And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So if fear is in the equation, that is not of God. And if God has already spoken and given you a word, believe him for what he's already said. This, I got to see it before it happens. I got to have proof to know that this is God and God has already shown you like time and time after again. There's been several situations that God has manifested certain things in your life and you know that that's been God. You know that that was God that did that for you. What else needs to be shown to know that God has already spoken? Faith must be activated. You got to believe and you got to keep telling yourself, well, God spoke this. I believe it. Like Caleb. Had faith. Joshua had faith. The two believed. And you got others that did not. They doubted. So they, since they doubted, they spoke the language of doubt. They spoke the language of unbelief. And that is not going to birth something positive. Fear came out of that. And then wanting to go back to what was familiar came out of that. So be mindful. Don't speak words that are going to birth fear. Words of doubt. I can't, this is impossible, there's no way, all words of unbelief. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is a requirement, so it is unhealthy and unwise to speak words of unbelief because it's not going to birth anything that's going to be healthy, that's going to be positive. So before you position yourself to look at a situation that you might not even be prepared for, Allow God to prepare you for where he's taking you. Don't step into something prematurely because you feel like I want it now. I'm ready right now. And you haven't allowed yourself to go to the process or go through the process for your faith to be where it needs to be. Because just because the children of Israel were going to Canaan, they're going to the promised land. The promised land does not mean there won't be giants. The promised land does not mean because there is milk and honey flowing, that there won't be other things that are different, other things that are bigger, other things that are a total unfamiliar experience. But when you're so focused on the milk and honey part, of course, if you have not allowed yourself to be prepared and processed by God until the time comes, you're so focused on the milk and honey. 
that you're not prepared for the giants and in your own thinking and based on your own natural sight because you have not included God in the process. You begin to see it in a way that you speak words of unbelief. Caleb and Joshua spoke words of faith. Let's go. Let's go get it. Let's do it. It's ours. Those are words of faith. Those are words of belief. So I encourage you, allow God to take you through your process. Don't be so anxious to get to the place that God has promised you that you go and you're not prepared for all that is there because you begin to look at things with your natural eye instead of walking by faith and seeing beyond what is in front of you. Yes, there may be a giant naturally, but that giant is a representation of how God is going to show up and how God has been backing you the entire time. A giant in the physical, natural sense to look at, but a giant that stands before you that has no power. You have the backing where the power of God has you, is keeping you, and God fights your battles. Go into it knowing who you are or go into it knowing that it's going to require faith and not faith that is temporary. Meaning, yeah, you say you have faith until you see the giant with your natural eye. And then your faith just folds and it goes into you speaking words of unbelief because you allow fear to grip. You allow fear to be birthed. I encourage you, don't speak the language of unbelief. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, just to say thank you. I thank you for life, health, and strength. God, I thank you for this time, Lord, for those, God, that are in a place that feel like they're ready to go to where it is, Father, you've promised them. That, Father, they allow the process of whatever it is you're doing within them, God, so they can be better prepared for what is there for wherever you're taking them. That, Lord, that they walk by faith and they hold on to your word for whatever you've already promised, God. You make good on your promises and not to get to a place, God, that they see something with their natural eye and then they want to go back to what is familiar. That, Lord, that they will trust you and no matter what giant situation, no matter what giant obstacle stands before them, they will allow faith to continue to keep them walking forward. Trusting you, trusting your word, believing you, believing your word, and knowing that God, you are their keeper. You are their protector. You are the one who has their back in all these situations. And Father, you know the end from the beginning. I cast out the spirit of fear. I cast out the spirit of doubt in the name of Jesus. And I speak the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. And I glorify your name. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. You all be blessed. Thank you for joining me on deck in the triage room. To get the music you hear in this podcast or to stay connected, visit my website, UrsulaCamille.com. That's U-R-S-E-L-A-C-A-M-I-L-L-E.com. Sign up on my email list, get merch and more. Have an area of pain you want to address in the triage room? Send your email to the triage room at gmail.com. I'm your host, you Ursula Camille, signing off. Be blessed. One touch in your life to change. Did you know that Jesus reigns? One touch in your life to change.